today I'm going to shoot a video on how to change out the radiator on a 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 5.7 liter V8 Hemi. You know, I looked on YouTube for other videos. I couldn't find a specific YouTube for my vehicle. Maybe a few years before there I saw one guy failed at trying to do it. I'm going to go ahead and just do like a quick instructional video on how to do it from start to finish. As you can see, here's my Jeep. I got the new radiator sitting right there. Just got it from AutoZone, it was $200. It has a lifetime warranty on it, so that's why I paid a little extra for the $200 one. First, we're gonna have to take this grill off. And to do that, you have these little clips right here. And when you're taking these clips off, you just use a little flathead screwdriver. You pry these up, and they, they come out real easily. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six of those. And we're gonna take this cover off right here. Uh, to get the uh, grill out, there's a couple of bolts we'll need to loosen, and then it just leans forward and slides out. So you got to remove the uh, thermostat. In order to do that, I need to get to it. It's in the top of the engine, right back here. So I'm going to go ahead and air remove the air intake duct, and we're going to take all of that off so we can get at it from this angle here. Once you remove the uh, th uh, the thermostat, you'll be able to flush the water all the way through. With So in order to remove the air intake duct, you have some clamps here. You need to loosen your clamps and you got one there connecting to the throttle body. And then you have a, a bolt right here. If you did, uh, take that bolt out, loosen your clamps, you should be able to slide it off and slide it out. Uh, we're also going to remove this box just so we have extra room to work with. And I'm going to be cleaning out the uh, coolant reservoir as well. It's your throttle, your throttle body. I have my upper hose from the radiator here. So I'm gonna loosen this clamp. My thermostat's right in here. Behind this hose, behind this uh, the body right here. We're gonna go ahead and loosen that, take the thermostat out. Put a drain pan under the engine for any coolant that might come out. Right here is the uh, coolant drain cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that cap, drain the fluid. You just twist the little uh, tab right there and it opens up. While that's draining, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up this uh, hose over here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I'm going to pull that thermostat out. And then I'm going to put this uh, housing back on because we want the water to flush all the way through the system. So there's the thermostat. And that should just pop out. So I just put this thermostat in not too long ago, so it should still be good. Just remember the orientation it's in when you pull it out because you want to put it back in the same orientation. I might. Now that you have the thermostat out, you're going to go ahead and replace this housing and, we're, and that's how we're going to flush the system. On the Hemi engines, the cooling fan is actually driven by the power steering fluid here. Um, it's not your typical regular just uh, electrical fan that comes on and off. It actually is a hydraulic driven by the power steering fluid. So in order to take the fan shroud off, I need to drain the power steering fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drain the power steering fluid. Start to remove the fan shroud and the front grill area so we can start to get at the radiator underneath. Your grill just flips forward and pops off just like that. Nothing to it. I'm going to go ahead and take this box out of the way just so I have more working room. This air intake right here. I'm also going to eventually going to need to take these little stabilizer bars off right here. A little help assistance, but I got the bolt loose. We're going to take this box out. And the way this box comes out is I took the bolt out right here. That's what I was trying to get out of there. So like I said, I got that bolt out right there holding the box in. It's a little loose now, right? So there's only one thing holding this in right now, and there's a rubber a rubber grommet right here. So it just pops out, and that's what it looks like. And then that's that little rubber doodad that goes in that little rubber grommet right there. Good rule of thumb that I like to always go by is anytime you remove a bolt or something, just put it back in the hole that you were using. That way you don't have a bunch of bolts lying around and you get them all mixed up or whatever. Go ahead and remove this little uh, cross beam right here. You got a couple of bolts there on that side and on this side, and then you got a couple of bolts here. Got 
got this cable over here for the latch. It's held on with a little clip behind this bar here. It just snaps out. You also got the uh, washer fluid reservoir cap held into place. It actually looks like a rivet. It's never removed a rivet. The way you do that is uh, get yourself some, some punches, little hole punches. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to drive the pin on the rivet. There's a hole right there. You're going to take your punch and you're going to drive that pin all the way through the rivet. And you're going to have to do that with a hammer. So I'm going to try to... All right, so I need to disconnect the lower pressure hose from the fan drive, and it's gonna be this hose right here if you're looking down from the top of the engine. It comes in from the bottom to a rubber hose. Hey, punk. You doing all right? Yeah. Can I get you water? Can I pour it on you? No, I'm good. I'm making a YouTube video. Oh, am I messing it up? No, I'll just mute this section. <laughs> what, me dumping water on you? Power steering fluid all over me, which is what I'm draining. You look hot, babe. I am hot. No, oh, but you look sexy hot. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I just opened the lid, so we're going to be draining power steering fluid. And remove this upper hose for the radiator. I removed the two radiator mounting bolts. There was one back here, all the way in the back. One back here, connected to this little frame piece right here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the uh, power steering cooler. I'm gonna take the bolt out right here behind this hose. And there's a bolt here holding the power steering cooler to the radiator. We're gonna go ahead and take those out, loosen the power steering cooler, and pull it forward a little bit. For the uh, transmission cooler now, this one and this one. And this is the transmission cooler right here. So this is the actual radiator. We need to disconnect these two from each other. All right, the transmission cooler also has two bolts down way at the bottom, one in this far right corner and one in this far left corner. So I'm gonna take those two bolts out as well. I'm gonna be making some uh, disconnections here. This is the overflow tube for the radiator reservoir. We're gonna take this cap off here. I'm gonna go ahead and go underneath and remove the uh, bottom radiator hose. This is it right here. I'm just gonna disconnect it from the bottom of the radiator. It's just a little squeeze clamp. There's four bolts holding the fan shroud on here. You got one here. You got one here. You got one right down there. I don't know if you can see it. You can kind of see it from this angle too. And then you got one halfway down over here. You can kind of see it right under that hose there. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect those uh, bolts from the fan shroud from the uh, radiator. And we're gonna push the fan shroud back a little bit. I'm gonna have to disconnect these transmission cooler lines right here. What it is, there's a little retaining clip in these little grooves here. See what it looks like so I'm gonna go ahead and take that other one out I picked up some of these little rubber stoppers to stop up this line when I pull it out so I don't get transmission fluid everywhere when I lift up this corner here I noticed that a lot more uh, coolant is coming out here, so I got the pan under there catching all that extra coolant coming out. I noticed that a lot of this uh, getting the radiator out, a lot of finesse and finagling here. I've got it up a little further. It is a beast trying to get out of here with these lines from the, with all these lines in the way, because they don't bend, they don't flex. It disconnected two of the transmission cooler lines. Check it out, guys. Whew, finally got it loose. 
it's going to come out real nice and easy. I'm going to show you where I got hung up on. I got hung up on trying to get it past all these transmission lines over here. The uh, whew, lower hose um, port right here and this little bracket right here that the transmission cooler connects to kept getting hung up on the lines and this kept getting hung up on the back side. So trying to wiggle it in and out of there because there's no side so there's no side control in any of this. I had to uh, eventually once I got this side high enough I was able to pull this side up and work kind of like that and it was able to work its way out of there so old radiators out. So it looks like I don't need to transfer much maybe this little plastic case right here or uh, shield so I'll transfer this to the new radiator. What I wanted to show you was what I did extra. I went ahead and disconnected the uh, power steering hose from the cooler. So just if you do that, you can kind of swing the whole cooler out of the way. That's one less thing you got to worry about. And I noticed the cooler was rubbing up on this uh, little bolt right there, this little um, bracket. So I just moved it out of the way. It was one of those little clips again. Took the clip off. All right, so I got the uh, transmission cooler kind of back in position. This is cradling nicely into the uh, little grooves at the bottom where those rubber feet are sitting. So I'm going to start repositioning everything where it needs to go and then uh, start t putting the bolts back on, reconnecting these hoses here, and then uh, reconnect the hose for the uh, steering fluid there, reconnect all the hoses on the bottom, and then go from there and reconnect the fan. So I got I got some work cut a, ahead of me, so So yeah, I had a major issue of trying to fit that radiator, well, the transmission cooler back in. Apparently, here's the old radiator. The transmission cooler has a plastic tab with a 90 degree angle on it. And that tab sits right here, right there. And then it overhangs on this side to line up this hole right here. Problem on the new radiator, this tab right here that holds it is about that long all the way across. So the transmission or yeah the transmission cooler is not fitting down all the way that little tab is not hugging this this support bracket so what i did i took my trusty electric fisherman knife it's a serrated blade <laughs> that's what i had on hand and i'm going to move this out of the way here i don't know if you can see it down there but i cut a little notch right in that little tab right there just like that I just cut it back and forth, cut it, cut it, cut it, and uh, it sits nice and snug in there now. As you can see, there's a nice little notch right there, so that little tab right there for the transmission cooler fits nice and snug against there, and now I can put the bolt in. I feel like such an idiot. I've been trying to get these bolts in the bottom of, the, of, the, of this uh, transmission cooler for 30 minutes now. But I've been coming in from the top. I just realized. Check it out. Right there. I've been trying to squeeze my two arms in through this little gap right here. And then I got access right here. Both of them. Now I feel like you're an idiot.
All right, I have all the mounting bolt uh, bolts in. Two here, the radiator mounting bolt. I got one here, one here. Got one in the bottom, one in the bottom there. I got one, here let me get in the back. I got one right here holding the fan in place and uh, this is part of the transmission fluid cooler. I have one down here also holding the fan in place and then I have two on this side holding the fan in place. I got the uh, power steering reservoir back in place. Um, I'm going to start connecting the, the several hoses I disconnected in the bottom and then we're going to worry about uh, top it off on some fluids. So. I haven't put the thermostat back in. I'm going to flush the system as much as I can for about 10 minutes with just water. And then I'm going to top off all the, all the fluids and uh, see, uh, see if we have any leaks anywhere. So keep your fingers crossed. Okay, I got the thermostat back in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the housing back on, hook up the hoses, and then uh, top off the fluids. And uh, then I'm gonna, I already put some power steering fluid in, but um, I gotta bleed the hoses, get all the air bubbles out of it, and um, top off my coolant, and we should be good. Well, I have a few gallons of distilled water to mix with the 100% coolant. Looking good, no leaks so far. <laughs> Still got to top off a few more fluids. That loud noise is the power steering pump. It needs to uh, cycle and bleed out all the bubbles that have been in the line, so that's why it's so noisy. That'll go away every time I turn the wheel. It'll bleed the uh, fluid through more and more and um, you know, just keep the level high and it'll stop that noise. If you can't tell, it's the next day. I kind of stopped working on it last night about 11, 11.30. Uh, I was pretty much had everything put back together. I just ran out of fluids. I didn't realize it took more than a quart for the power steering fluid. So, so after work, I went ahead and picked up another quart. So I'm gonna go ahead and top off these fluids, test run it run the engine see if I can get the uh, temperature to go up maintain and we'll go from there all right so I just topped off my power steering fluid and I bled the lines a little bit in order to bleed the lines you just turn your steering wheel a few times it makes that loud noise but um that's getting those air bubbles out of there and you want to do that a couple times check the level do it again check the level because those air bubbles are making space and you want to top it off so I bled my power steering lines, uh, everything works good, no sound now. Um, I've had it running for about 10 minutes now. My uh, upper tube here is getting nice and hot, so I can tell the coolant's running. Our cap is nice and hot, our temperature's controlled. Uh, I already went ahead and ran the heater, because you want to get uh, the coolant to run through the heater core in there. Um, we're running at a good uh, optimal temperature. Um, and I got heat blowing right now, it's blowing nice and warm. That means uh, the coolant's getting through the system. Uh, so far, so good. No leaks, no dripping. So all I have left to do is put the grill on and put the uh, little undercarriage plastic protector thing back on underneath. 
and uh, we'll be all set. I think I'm good to go. I also got a lot of cleanup to do. Make sure you don't leave any coolant or um, any kind of fluid lying around, especially if it has a sweet smell to it. Animals like that smell and they'll come by and drink it and it's toxic to them. So you don't want to be killing any neighborhood animals or anything. So make sure you uh, put it in an approved container. You can take it back to like an auto parts store. They'll go ahead and dump it for you uh, and dispose of it for you in the proper way. So that's my first engine video or do it yourself how to car video if you like it. If you want to see anything like that in the future, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.